everybody. <laughs> Welcome to G'day MMA. We are here, Alan Joban, Jason Ellis, and we have a guest this week, Casey Mitchell. We have never had a guest. First time. Yeah, and we already uh, fought him. <laughs> we did. That's what happened. That's why we, we had have a, no guests. Because if you want to be a guest yeah. on this show, you, gotta get you must in. fight us, yes. both of us. Yeah. Yes. And then we have a powerlifting competition, possibly. We thought it was the best sell ever. Like, <laughs> who wouldn't want to be a guest on this show? You get to fight both hosts. <laughs> but apparently, nobody wanted to show up uh, yes. until KC. KC so. took the challenge. That's right. And he did <clears throat> exceptionally well. And he also won the stomach punch challenge, which is God. another terrible idea from Alan Jones. <laughs> I thought I was going to do much better, actually, because um, I do a lot of app conditioning, app conditioning in class all the time. I'm usually in the top one or two winners of it. First punch, you no, first, you hit me with the first punch, and I go, okay, he's got a lot of power. And then Jason finishes me off with that, like, when you hit high in the ass, like, <laughs> those are just kind of not fair. <laughs> you did it first. You punched me right in the holy bit right there where there's no ab. And I was like, oh, we're going to play that game? Okay, you fucking asshole. And, and I aimed high too. I caught myself when KC would hit. His wind-up was so intimidating. You see he flexes his arms. And so on the wind-up, I find myself going on my tippy toes to try to like deflect the energy. And then I get knocked out. And then Jason and you and KC are in there. And Jason's doing the same thing. He sees the wind up. He's trying to come up. <laughs> it was a debacle. Yeah. And then you bench press my wife. So welcome to the show. That's all you have to do. If anybody else wants to be a guest, <laughs> just, press. just do all those, oh, yeah. then you're in. Um, so we don't know that much about you. I know from uh, your Instagram and uh, moving around with you today that you are missing a leg. And I obviously know that you are a vet and that happened. And I saw a little bit about it and how they've, uh, and then we did speak a little bit about painkillers and multiple surgeries for years and years to get where you are now so yeah. explain a little bit about that and i guess i did not know that you already trained mma before the injury yeah, yeah i didn't either yeah a little bit of it before because people that don't know casey is uh a high level weightlifter and is now the first person to ever you got a license to box right you're saying we're, we're working on it right now it's almost done yeah we're just right. getting professional we're not talking professional. about an amateur headgear yeah no pro. yeah just gonna go pro um i know like some people are like how can you just go pro already but i mean i have like a little bit of fighting background but there's a lot of ways to go pro and it happens it, all the yeah, time it happens all the time i mean yeah. i did that a lot of people do that. i mean in mma in <laughs> boxing i had an amateur boxing fight first yeah. but in mma i didn't even want to it was a skateboard guy that was having an MMA, uh, like all, he was having his own MMA card, Brian Sheckler. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he was like, I want a pro skateboarder to be on the MMA card. Ellis, you train. I was like, yeah, I train, but I don't, I train enough to know that I'm not a real fighter. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, but we'll put you against a guy that's as good as you. And I'm like, oh, well then if that's the case, yeah. So then I had a, a pro MMA fight without having any amateur fights. And yeah. It's not the best way to go about it, but I think when you're older and you're, you kind of got to. It's just different. It's you're different. not doing it to yeah. like. And, and, I wasn't doing it for a career. <clears throat> it was I was doing it because I wanted to have a fight and see what it was like to have a real fight. Yeah. And there, there was never even in, in, in boxing, maybe, but in MMA, there was never even amateurs ten years ago. It was no. straight to pro, and yeah. then amateurs came about about ten years ago. Now people all will have like an amateur career before then. Yeah, Boxing's is different. That. Boxers right. will have. 200 oh, fights yeah, go absolutely. to the olympics absolutely. and they say i'm ready to go pro yeah. make money amateur nationals all that stuff but right if you look at them they're young kids you know, yeah i'm not a, I'm, I'm 36 36 yeah. now you know, i just turned 36 like i did the same ago. thing when i got my license so, for the yeah. athletic commission when they Happy went birthday. down the line and they asked how old you were and yeah. i said i think i was 36 or yeah. 35 or something and the whole table went <laughs> why is he why yeah. is he doing that and yeah. I'm, like, I'm like oh wow it just dawned on me that yeah i'm way too old to be later here. in but life they, according to who you know right, yeah because yeah. i was when i look back at that i was a fucking spring chicken yeah i had another fight 10 years after that so you can you can go you yeah can go i feel away. fine when it comes to getting licensed I, like i said people get licensed <clears throat> all the time in mma and, and, and in all kinds of combat sports going straight to pro ben Ashkin got uh, ben got a it. License. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they license and if, ben, hey, what the fuck did they give that him that? Hey, if he can get it, anybody <laughs> That's can what get I'm it. Saying, man. <laughs> yeah. I really, we'll get yeah. into that in a minute. Yeah. But, but do you do you have any concern or you feel pretty comfortable that you, the, the, the commission will go ahead and sanction you? To, to, to I fight? mean, there's always concern mostly because of like, you know, the leg and stuff like that. Whether, but but there there has been an amputee. Um, I can't think of his name off the top of my head. He 1985, he was 
uh, like champion boxer. Really? He was a pro, he was a pro boxer before lost his leg in a motorcycle accident, came back and fought all the way through and had yeah. more than one fight. Yeah, oh yeah. Multiples. A career. Yeah, wow. A career. Yeah. Finished off his career boxing as an MP. Oh, okay. So, so he, it's been done. So the thing is also with amateur, uh, you know, with like the USA boxing and all that whatnot, there's been a lot of lawsuits because there's amputees that are, that have tried to do like nationals or something like that. And they're, they're, they're denying them to uh, denying it. And here's the thing. I'm like, I'm turned on it myself because I have like done research on some of those guys that are amputees that are trying to like do these high level amateur boxing. And uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you're, you're going to the nationals to box those kids there, they're, they're like on the, on the scale to just turn pro, like they're good. Yeah. So if you put somebody in there where their balance maybe ain't, are, isn't good or it, it, they can in, uh, potentially injure themselves or you're putting them in a bad situation. Yeah. Um, I could see where them as an amateur, like sanction thing where it's like younger kids and stuff, yeah. they're going to, they, they're a little bit more protected. The protocol there. of yeah. safety is a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Yeah. Absolutely. You're, you're not, you're not, you don't want to give a kid a permanent injury from right. something where and, he's and, just like, I don't care. And I'm I saying, do it. yeah, and I'm yeah. saying kid, like even like 19, 20, 22, 23 years right. old kids. And uh, then I go and I did my research on some of the guys, the kids that were, that hit the lawsuits against USA Boxing for like discrimination, you know, you know, oh, I'm shit. handicapping or whatever. So there's lawsuits that have gone on like two, I think. And I, I, I kind of see what they're talking about in the sense of, they're, they're, the kids aren't moving real well and you put them in there with a high level amateur that can't that moves and he kind of moves and kind of trips a little bit here and there it's it's a liability you know and and don't get me wrong i i don't think i do i think that amputee shouldn't be allowed no i'm not saying that what i'm saying is like get yourself to a level to where you can move against somebody that can move and to where you're not gonna trip fall you know uh you have balance you look like you're able to move like a normal person and uh. And, and I, and I, and I'm, I feel like I'm allowed to say that cause I'm a fucking FT. So I, and I try to do the best to move like a normal person. And then, and if I didn't, like if I was like sparring and doing stuff and I was like falling and tripping over myself because I'm missing a leg, then I would say, no, I would not. Uh, this is not like a sport that I can potentially do right now. And definitely not uh, at a competitive level, amateur or pro. But I've sparred dozens of times already and I've never tripped or fallen. So, so I'm so curious as you're <clears> saying this, I'm realizing you know, if you have two legs and in your boxing, you don't necessarily have to think about your footwork quite right. as much. You're thinking about absolutely. other stuff, the upper body. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So are you processing how are my legs moving right now along with my upper body, yeah. the jab and everything else that has to be processed? Yeah. So like, yeah, my, my mind is like, uh, like a steamroller when I'm boxing. You're always I, thinking about your footwork. Yeah. Cause I have to, cause I can't feel it sometimes. I, I'm so what basically like oh, from, even... from like the powerlifting, like since I've been powerlifting, I've just learned to really feel my body from my left hip. So I kind of like more really feeling my left hip and where I'm at. And every wow. once in a while, like when I box, yeah. I'll get a little squared up, but even guys with two legs get squared up. Yeah. You know, they get in their square stance on accident, you know, whatever. But I don't do it very often. And so, yeah, so no, I move. I kind of, feel, I've just learned to kind of really feel it through my my hip. But then when like I get ready to throw a jab, like I'm already like, in my in my head processing that i'm going to throw or across to where i can like lunge and 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 push off of it so i do that with my hip and i because your amputee is your back leg is my back leg and you have to be able to yeah, push off of that making yeah. sure that the hip is in alignment it's an alignment can you imagine yeah. having to process anything yeah. more than we're already processing when we're sparring yeah. to think about how does my hip feel do i feel like i have a good base to the ground yeah. i mean it's just so much more right so right right now on. like with rob you know he's coaching me a little bit and then i have another coach down in bakersfield that works with me a little bit named tio with they're constantly reminding me when i go to throw across you know like push push you know you know throw the hip you know and I, it's just repetition now where i'm like now i'm starting to like when i do it i'm feeling it you know and and even in my brain like even like sitting here i'm thinking about i can like almost feel it on my hip like and i'm just sitting here because it's just like repetitiveness of me trying to learn how to do it and so it's taking Wild, man. taking a lot of time but it's kind of coming together you know and uh yeah so i'm just gonna do the pro thing because i'm old or <laughs> older. Yeah, yeah and uh you're not a 21 year old uh, guy starting his career i you get know it. and um uh, I, I like, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like you said, I just want to, you know, get in there and do it. And, uh, I just, I kind of dominated the powerlifting scene for a minute as an amputee. I'm not like the best powerlifter in the world, but I am one of the best amputee powerlifters in the world. Um, and, and for, you know, the top tier amputee powerlifter, you know, and, uh, I've worked really hard for that. I worked for, you know, five, six years to become that. And so, um, I just I'm bored, you yeah. know, I'm just like, I, what do you want me? What do you want me to do that next? Deadlift seven hundred? Fuck yeah, that'd be cool. But I'm just trying to push myself uh, to uh, see like what what like what I'm capable of doing for myself. And then 
you know, when I started doing this powerlifting thing, nobody was, there was, there was no amputees doing this shit. Like not at the level, not yeah. like and full power. Now. Oh, it, it's incredible. Really? It's incredible. Yeah. It's, I, and the best thing is they all tag me and they all put in there, like, I'm coming for your records and I'm coming for this. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, we train hard. See you at the top, buddy. Let's go. You know, and I love it. And, and it's motivating. And there's some, I, I there's like, there's a couple that I watch. I'm like, God, his squat's beautiful. Like, damn, his squat is so much nicer than mine. <laughs> not as strong as me. But that is nice. I guess it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's so just incredible to see that these guys are like stepping up and like realizing that they're, they can do it too. Cause like, I just got out there and did it, you know, and, and it's putting them on a level where in their mindset now they're, they don't feel like they're disabled in the sense of they have to compete in a disabled type of event or an adaptive event. They can go compete against able-bodied athletes just like I did. And I mean, I, I go on the stages and whoop able body athletes asses all day powerlifting. You know, it's just a progression thing. And that's the thing with powerlifting. It's just like anybody can do it. It's just a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You, anybody can get stronger. You don't have to have genetics to get stronger. You just got to put the time in to get strong. You don't feel like genetics is a... I mean, uh, genetics is always a great thing. Right. Obviously. I mean, there's a guy, Larry Wills. Great genetics. He's one of the best powerlifters in the world. Yep. Um, but he's also been doing it since he was like 10, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. He's got freakish genetics. The guy's a freak ass athlete. Um, but guys that don't, for example, think about it. You know what we're talking about with Ben. Ben's very athletic, world-class wrestler. Jake Paul's not really athletic, but he outworked. He probably worked so fucking hard recently where he, and, and the athlete didn't. So hard work outbeat the athlete. And mm -hmm. that's just kind of like how I feel. I am. I, you know, as an amputee, am I like the best athlete for powerlifting? Probably not, but I worked really hard. And I can beat those that are like, kind of like genetic gifted or something like that. You know what I mean? So it's just, it, it just put us on a different spectrum. You know, we have to work a little harder, train a little harder, train a little different. We can't, um, you know, we can't, I like me, I can't free squat all the time. Like all these other guys, which free squatting means just normal squats because my hip, I've blown this hip, like just many, many times because I'm compensating. Yeah. That's, right? that's what I was wondering. Like compensating, you mean blown compensating, it? huh? Like blew it out. Like it's just sprained it bad like yeah just surgeries no surgeries just intense pain and so i have like me i do a lot of box squatting which is great because uh, it builds explosive sitting yeah. down on a box so, uh, yeah i squat yeah. down to a box and then i explode up out yeah. of it and it saves the hip and then when i'm about four or five weeks out from comp i start i, I start putting in free squats and then uh that way i'm just my hips healthy when i go to compete okay then there's some amputees that they just free squat all the time and that's just the way it is but you know that guy's doing 225 pounds. I'm trying to like squat 500 and something pounds. So it's just different, you know, for his training and my training. And then training as like a normal athlete, those guys, they free squat all the time. And if I could, I would, but I can't, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just different. But yeah, it's just like, so the boxing thing, like, I just want to jump into it and just kind of do it and see what, see what happens, see what I'm capable of doing. And I'm pretty dedicated type of person so yeah i mean i trained for one year straight without even doing one powerlifting comp before i did my first powerlifting comp you know just straight training not knowing what was gonna what was gonna happen you know and then finally just did it and did it what's your timeline like boxing wise <clears throat> i mean yeah. what do you foresee in the future uh like, so yeah there? so uh right now um you know it's, like, damn, it's the first time i've even talked about any of this like yeah. the future is boxing um so right so right now uh we're looking like end of august september an actual date. An actual date. Yeah, they're working on it right now. So, you know, I got the contract with the promoter I'm supposed to sign. That's kind of like where the where the stop sign is right now for me with them is like they're just kind of waiting on me to sign this contract. It's a little nerve wracking signing a 10 page, 11 page contract. That's, you know. For how many fights? It's more like how many years instead of fights. Yeah. Wait, you're so, going to sign a fucking multi year boxing mm -hmm. deal? Yeah. And, and, you sure and, you want to do that? I don't know. I'm like, that's why I've been sitting on it lately. You know, maybe just we should got Robert looking off it the, over. Off the, yeah, I just been sitting yeah. on it lately because you don't yeah, even had our fight and you're going to sign a multi year yeah. deal with him. Yeah. What if you don't like it? Boxing. So that's the thing in the contract because of like with my circumstances and stuff like that, they're, they're um, totally fine with me. Like, like basically like retiring if I don't like it or mm -hmm. the, the whole thing is just, a, it doesn't allow me to go box under any type of other like promoter, I guess you could say. Uh, you have okay. to box under them for yeah, a number of years. Yeah. So the, it, you have to finish. But they're going to pay you. Oh yeah, and and have you guys got? You don't have to discuss with us, yeah, but yeah. have you guys gotten to the numbers yet? No, not yet. I haven't even. That's what that um, portion got of tomorrow it tomorrow and stuff like that. Like some stuff's in there. Um, it's all like and I, and like I said, it's more like in the sense of, well, you don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with me in the fight thing. Like you know, I I could go do a pro fight and just annihilate my first guy, and then it blows up, and the next thing you know, and then you like, want to renegotiate, yeah, or, or, get, or, or like yeah, or next thing you know, like 
I don't know. Let's just say, for example, like the, as, to, as as horrible as it was, and I know we'll get into it, is like, let's just say Triller wants to like get something like like yeah. me out there because it's pretty fucking cool to see an amputee getting out there knocking heads or something like yeah. that. Now you're talking like, what, six figures? I think the lowest paid guy that night made six figures. There you go. So now what? Now what? You know, and 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 so that's that's the thing. It's just there's a lot on my brain because I've never I've never signed anything like this before. I'm a businessman. I own a company. I have athletes, but this is this is fucking different. This and it's is, perfect timing. I mean, different. right now yeah. we're in the uh, the state of the world where boxing right now is trying to figure itself out. Right, yeah. all these triller and yeah. other organizations yeah. and bare knuckle boxing and yeah. all these things are just kind of like yeah. making light of guys that YouTubers, etc. You don't have to be the highest level boxer right now. And so if you could capitalize on it, and then you come into the scene, right. and now people are seeing an amputee. Who could fight? I mean, yeah. um, I think it, it'll captivate the audience, man. That'd that's be, what, that's that's interested. and that's my goal. Is just like I said, to captivate, motivate, inspire. I'm not sitting here thinking like hey, I'm gonna go see Fury, you know, in the heavyweight division anytime ever. May I, I like to meet him? You know what I mean? But yeah. I'm not sitting there thinking I'm like I'm like I, you know like for example like you know Jake Paul, you know he's 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 thinks he's like the reckoning of boxing right now, and I'm like, dude, you're yeah jesus christ like just be a realist i'm a realist i'm just i just want to do this for myself uh and to uh, uh motivate and, uh, and and let people see like just it's what i've been doing it's what i'm just what i'm built to do i think you know since my injuries and stuff and it's just to show people like you're capable of just doing whatever the fuck you want no matter circumstances i love that I that's what's driving you and it's yeah. not the uh the jake paul story no it's not that it's not any of that it's not it's not even like money obviously yeah like everybody wants to get paid because yeah. you know we're putting the work in and we're doing shit but I just want to do this. I don't know. I just woke up one day and I was like, I think I'm just gonna box, because I I go box and I and I I do it every once in a while for fun. I and I and I and it, and it really like kind of sucks me in, and uh, it, it, in a weird way, it kind of makes me a better person. Like I'm just more like stabilized. Do you think it's more the intensity of having Absolutely. lots of people that reminds you of? Because I mean, you're a guy that yeah. you're already training before you went to war, mm -hmm. and then. You know, you're an you're an adrenaline. Junkie. I'm an adrenaline junkie, right. absolutely, one hundred percent. Because to <laughs> yeah. me, skateboarding, yeah. when I fought, why did I fight? Yeah. Because I wasn't a pro skateboarder anymore. Yeah, and I needed something that was fucking crazy. Yeah, or I was not going to feel like I was having a a day worth living. Yeah, that's that's it. That's that. I mean, I like sucking too. I like like yeah. getting beat up. I like it. I like <laughs> feeling like shit. And in the moment, I'm like, fuck this, you know. But afterwards, mm. I walk. I'm like, fuck, that was epic. Hell yeah, yeah. And, then yeah. I, and then I go to sleep thinking about it, wake up, ready yeah, to do it again. Yeah, now I can't punk out because now I, I got yeah, to face my fears. Yeah. My demons get better at this. Yeah, yeah. and now I'm like, and now people see me doing it. I put it out there that I'm like legitimately going to do this. So it's like, I'm like, I'm really about it. I'm really about it. I mean, it. if that date holds true, you're talking about <clears throat> stepping into the ring for the first time. Yeah, five, six months from now. A couple of months. Yeah, yeah. five, six Ellis months. Ellis is in October. Yeah. You can't fight there because you signed some crazy deal with these other dudes. <laughs> That's why you were. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see. see, man. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, it's just I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty pretty in love with the the boxing MMA life. Like I like it a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, just getting up there and messing around with you guys, it just I don't know. I'm like in this zone that I haven't felt since the beginning of powerlifting. You know, even with powerlifting, yeah. I haven't felt that like adrenaline for like the last like year or so yeah. i was kind of just going to the gym going through motion Don't get me wrong, i love lifting but it's kind of like making me go in there and lift even more like i'm lifting a little bit more than i was now before boxing now you know because i'm just like motivated to train box yeah. stay strong get in good shape and and so like yeah it's just it's just kind of like it's just all good right now no yeah. and so, we share <clears throat> we share the the same boxing coach for our viewers robert sally yeah been my boxing coach on and off for a while mm -hmm. using from for my last fight and he's really good at just dissecting things he's not the kind of guy that's going to go in there and do a mayweather 10 punch combo as much as he'll dissect little things and get the the, the meat and potatoes yeah. of it just having a sharp jab making you angling make sure you're angling out the right way small subtle things that i think is <clears> what he's going to need casey's going to need he's not trying to go in there and be the flashiest guy yeah. as, as much as Find your attributes, right. your strength, and, and your explosion and things right. that you could do well. And use that in, a pro, in, in an advan advantageous way yeah. to get these wins. Yeah, that's what I like about it is he's like, he's really training, you know, me um, for like my capabilities. Right. Of like my strengths. And then we're making my weaknesses Having better. an understanding of that. Right. You know, like, uh, you know, it's like you, I obviously, you watch, I watch you move around. Me and you move definitely different. I'm like, you're more like way out there kind of ways. You're laying a lot of hits from the outside of me. I'm like, I want to get inside and tear you apart on the inside yeah. and that's and so and 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 working with rob a little bit he's you know I've, i'm hitting mitts i'm hitting bags i'm doing stuff with him and he he knows where the power is for me and it's when i get up on the inside like you you know you were saying that you're an inside the body tight you know and, and honestly i i'm just a huge fan of like 
dropping a motherfucker with a body shot <laughs> is yeah. way back, I, way back. Are you yeah. referring to me? <laughs> are we back on this? Yeah. Yeah. Did that happen? Yeah, I know yeah, we yeah, that did happen today. But it's, to me, I'd rather knock somebody out with a body shot than a headshot. I don't know why. It, but it was just like, you hit somebody at the body, you see them crumble, it's like, Damn. You walk away. I know when yeah. you hit somebody with a liver shot, and and like when you're sparring, and you're like, "You good? You good?" And you kind of walk away, like, yeah, "Yeah, I just did that shit." You yeah. need some time. Take some time, brother. Yeah, you know, it's like it's, it feels. I good like it. I like sure. it. Hitting you know? someone hard in the body, I don't feel like I'm that mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if I hit you in the head, hard, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. if this isn't a real fight, then I'm really sorry. Yeah, because yeah, I wasn't trying to do that. Yeah. But if I get you in the body hard and you take a knee, mm. that's not. I'm not a mean person. You yeah. should have blocked that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because it is an unspoken rule yeah. in training that, like, if you're not trying to hurt your partner, you got to go lighter to the head, but you could go kind of harder to the yeah. body. It's kind of unspoken. So you drop somebody. It's gratifying, man. It feels. Yeah. Good. So I don't know. So like, yeah, it's exciting. You know, this, like this whole thing's exciting. It's new. I'm like coming into like a whole different like just world than I've been in in the last like five years. Powerlifting has been my life for the last five years. My social media following is like, you know, powerlifting, people that are motivated by fitness and powerlifting. Yeah. So it's kind of changing. It's kind of changing, you know, and, and like my first video was, a, was a nightmare. I posted it cause I, I don't care. You know, I want people to see like how heavy I was, how slow I was and then see the progression. And that's what they're kind of seeing. And it's, it's kind of cool to see them being like your first video of boxing. Yeah. Once you came yeah, into the new terrible. world. Yeah. It's terrible. It's just, I, I mean, it was just slow. Yeah. Big, big brawly. You know, I was like, I think I was like two fifty something at that time mm -hmm. when I first started. And, and now, you know, and then I post a video with like Rob recently. My hands are just 10 times faster than they, what they were. And people are like, Holy shit, dude. It, like the progression. That's to me is like the beginning of the motivation from the beginning. And they're just watching the whole, thing unfold and know? we've spoken about this on the yeah. show before we spoke about speed before and one of the people that i truly learned that from was rob that mm -hmm. genetically you're only gifted to, to go yeah. a certain amount of speed right you yeah. can only get so fast from what your genetics that you have yeah. but technique will take you the rest of the way yeah, absolutely and you're seeing that you're seeing yeah, your, am, as your yeah. techni techniques getting better yeah. your speed's getting better things are and you're in a more ready position yeah uh, more more of the time a higher percentage of the time it gets you faster and so yeah like i love you, that you're seeing like that yeah already. like even today when you were like you know Telling like my, oh there there's the jab how fast you know it's fast yeah, and like yeah. in me I'm like seeing I'm like oh shit that is a little faster than what I'm normally throwing it at yeah. you know and, and and this whole thing's just been crazy like I mean my I'm fully transforming my body for boxing compared to what it was like months and months ago you know I'm just really it's been hard because I'm just usually this big massive tank that walks around and now I go to people and I mean people are like dude you're like you look way smaller and I'm like I know. But I like it. I yeah. do. I like it. Like I feel fucking good. Try carrying around yeah. a forty pound backpack. Yeah, yeah, I it's, feel it's, fucking good right now. And I, and I honestly like I don't. I'm not sitting here gonna say I'm a powerlifter. Like that powerlifters aren't athletes. It's just different. Like right now, I walk around and I do things that I'm like, fuck. I feel like a fucking athlete, man. Like yeah. I feel like a machine right now compared to like a tank. I guess you could say. <laughs> you know? yeah, and yeah. that's just but you get that big. Different. You get like tired and stuff. Like yeah, gas in ways yeah. that would probably scare you a little bit. Yeah, I you, you know, know there's many you times run you could probably fucking kill yourself. Oh man, there's times that I'd be sleeping and I'd stop breathing in my sleep and I'd have to sleep like when I was getting close to comps. You know, I'm you know heavy. I'm two fifty five, two sixty. I'd have to like sleep at a weird angle with pillows. It, it, it's miserable. It's miserable. I you gotta have the mask though. I mean, that's heard, a thing, but it's miserable. I've Jeez. heard just some stories yeah. where I'm like, man, as a committed guy to like yeah. get some shit done, that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. can, like, where there are tons of them when they get super big, they can't breathe, dude. Can you imagine? I mean, I, I'm just trying to comprehend that. I know <clears throat> as a pro fighter, I usually my weight <clears throat> doesn't vary tremendously, but about 20 pounds, I walk around about 190. I fight at 170, and come fight week <clears throat> at 170. I feel like a damn ninja. I'm like, yeah. holy shit, <laughs> yeah. 20 pounds yeah. less. Granted, I'm dehydrating myself and all that. Yeah. But I feel so agile and flexible. And right. like my punches turn over, my high kicks go up. Just from 20 pounds of shit that I didn't yeah. eat on me, right? Yeah. And can you imagine 40 pounds? I mean, you're yeah. having trouble sleeping, breathing at night. And you take that kind of weight off. Yeah. Making this transformation of your body to your yeah. pro debut. Yeah, it's it's. I'm yeah. excited to see it, man. I'm excited yeah, I'm, to see I'm, you I'm do excited. Work. I'm ready. You know, I'm like not, I don't want to say, when I say I'm ready, I'm mentally ready. I'm yeah. not, uh, that's, that's not really the whole battle, ready, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm you put in the work ready. and you, you want to get matched up with somebody who's, uh, the, the same a big level, key, right? Cause yeah. that's the, if it's the yeah. same level and then it's just your heart against my heart. Yeah. It's good. And you're, you're made for war, dude. Yeah. And it's a war. It's good. Make no mistake. When the yeah. bell goes, it's a fucking war. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't think, well, if I get her, the ref, I don't give a fuck about a ref. I have to win this. This is life or death to me. Yeah, that's how it is where I train down and in Bakersfield. It. It's uh, as soon as you step in the ring, like I tell them, like, you know, cause I, those guys, they go hard. There's no, I, every time I've been down since day one, it's never, I mean, my very first time ever sparring down there, it was just 
get your gear on, get yeah. your ass in there. And it's just, it's just, you do, they just, they go, yeah. you know, and, and it caught me off guard the first, I was definitely real timid the first time. Um, I boxed one of like Rob's guys, um, Billy, you know, Billy don't know him, but yeah, he's, he's a he, pro. Yeah. He's like an older pro. He's like gotcha. a seasoned pro older guy. He's a heavy set guy. And so, you know, he was, I, I was real timid. I was like, like, like I was on a street fight, you know, I was just swinging away, you know, and then, and I, and I, and then I watched my video. I'm like, what in the fuck was yeah. that? That's what everybody does at the early stages. Yeah, yeah that's I was it, so, man. I was so. That's why you never let two people that yeah. are just starting spar each yeah. other unless you're an asshole and you want to watch two people <laughs> yeah. try and kill each other. Yeah, yeah watch it was. This. Watch these three. I really yeah. watched it. I was like, you look like a dipshit. Yeah, yeah. I was like that. All the it's training the went. All the training went out the window. But everybody looked like a dipshit yeah. at some point, right? It's yeah. just I was so disappointed. I mean, I was legitimately disappointed. And then I just took that into consideration, and then I sparred two weeks later, and whole different. Mm -hmm. person and it's just, good to get those hard rounds out early. yeah that way you mm -hmm. know you know what it's like to be hit yeah and, and to face adversity but then and then as you every fighter we talked about this earlier when we were training now a lot of us just all train a lot lighter we don't go as hard uh it happens in age and it just happens happens in uh in, in, in experience because you don't want to go there and bang yourself up all the time yeah. you want to stay fresh and sharp just work on reactions right, right. yeah that's and that's that's key for me right now is like you know my you know, when I'm down in Bakersfield, there's a, there's like different levels of boxers in that room. And, you know, I get in there with some guys that are real good. And, you know, my reaction is getting a little bit better because I'll get in there with that good guy who's faster, snappier, and I'm, I'm having to react to it. And then I get in a guy that's a little slower mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I can really pick him apart, you know, and just like, so like the guy, Billy, when I box him, you know, if I go box him now, I can work him over pretty good, you know, compared to the very first time I boxed him when it was just like shit show. You know, look like Triller. Some of the fights on Triller. But, I think that first you know, fight's going to be pretty crucial. And like getting yeah. you the right <clears throat> matchup, the yeah. right experience, yeah. letting you go in there and get battle tested. Yeah. yeah. And getting and that I, victory, hopefully. Yeah. And I'm and I'm like that. Like I step in the ring, it's just like, even like sparring, it's like a flick, it's a switch. It's the yeah. same as like if I'm sitting on, like when I was in, in war, you know, I, I'm in the base or I'm in the, you know, my vehicle chilling. But as soon as we'd like the ramp would drop and we're out there and there's fucking enemy, it's like, you know, it's just like whole, whole fucking mentality change. Like I'm here to, I'm, Either you're dying or I'm dying. You know, it's just like which one and <laughs> motherfucker, I ain't trying to die. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the same. It's the same with me. Like when I when I box, it's like you're really gonna have to fucking hurt me. You're gonna have to knock me out or really fucking hurt me to like put me out of this fucking ring. You How know? many years were you were you <clears throat> fighting until the accident? And what was the accident? Uh so okay, so I, I joined the military pretty like pretty young, nineteen years old. Um uh I was um I was an airborne infantryman. And so my first duty station was Bragg. And then I went to, so I went to Iraq in 2005, 2006, and I was in the Baghdad area. And so I uh, was there, did my shit, you know, fuck shit up for 12, 13 months there. And then um, came back, um, got promoted to sergeant, re-enlisted, and then moved to Washington State. Got up there and um, was helping with the new unit, a striker brigade, like kind of build itself up to get ready for a future deployment. Um, that was deploying, I think it took us about three years to finally deploy. And so that's when I was up there and that's when I got into mixed martial arts because I was doing combatives and there was a guy in my platoon, his name was Lynn Bentley. Um, he was doing MMA out there and I believe he was actually in one of the first like ultimate fighters. Actually gotcha, he was, yeah. he actually was in one of the ultimate fighters, like the very first ones. And um, so he was in my platoon, so he was doing it. His name was Lynn the Liger Bentley. And I, he saw me that I could like, grapple very well because i just did wrestling for so long and i could do combatives very well and so he just kind of invited me down to camp victory where dennis holman was coaching yeah. misha tate was there before women were even really they weren't even in the ufc she was like she was like it at yeah, the time. Force. yeah strike force she yeah. was it and so she was there you know it was real cool and I, I i would go there you know four days a week and train and and then i did um i did about five or six amateur fights out there in tacoma Portland. amateur mma fights yeah yeah wow they're okay, on youtube man. i have like three on youtube yeah, I mean, they were like at the bars and stuff like that, you know, yeah. back in the day. Like, but they, I was fighting. You well, know? you felt that adrenaline rush. You've been. <laughs> oh in the yeah, cage I done it. Yeah, and I never got before. beat in the cage ever during my amateur times out there. I was a great wrestler. It was hard. It was hard to beat me if you couldn't wrestle. And yeah. uh, and so I did that for a while, and then um, I was actually going to do an amateur title fight out there in Washington, and then I got rapidly deployed, and so that got kicked. And actually, a guy that ended up getting the amateur title belt is a guy that I had beaten twice. Mm. So I was pissed. You know, I was actually in Afghanistan. And keeping trying to keep up on all this yeah, shit. When and you I, heard about it, when I heard about it, I was like motherfucker, you know. And uh, but you know, I was out there, and so I was in Afghanistan and uh, the Kandahar, Argandal. I was in. A, they put us everywhere out there. Helmand, we were out there and everywhere. And um, and then uh, I was there for about almost a little over twelve months, and then I went on my last mission, 
and it was a patrol mission. Just we were just going out in the middle of the night to patrol the area because there had been IEDs being getting set in and Taliban coming through and stuff like that. And then we just ran over a massive pressure plate IED that um, just blew blew me apart from underneath the vehicle. When you say we, how many yeah. people in it? That was my whole squad. It was my whole squad. So I think there's about seven, eight of us in there. In a tank? Uh, it's a striker. So it's a tank on wheels. It's got eight wheels. It moves about 60 miles an hour across the desert. It's fast. But, but even when those things blow up, the tank... That big. That big of a bomb. Yeah. It was big. And how did the uh, rest of the... So, yeah. There? So basically the, the IED exploded directly underneath where I was standing. So I, they all sit inside. So there's like a hatch and they're inside oh. just chilling. And then me, I have like probably my upper chest up out and I'm commanding and looking around you know, and I command the vehicle. And then in the back, I have two security guys with machine guns on the back that are he like same height out of the vehicle as me. Yeah. And then everybody else is inside. My driver's inside are like a, a, like a little compartment. My gunner who, uh, who runs a 50 cal or Mark 19 mm -hmm. uh, machine guns. He's kind of like in a cockpit underneath with just TV screens and stuff. It's crazy high tech shit. He watches the TV screen yeah. to see where he's shooting. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So the bullets can't get him. They can't. He's inside. Nice. Yeah. And so, um, so, and it's got thermal imaging and it's got everything, you know? And so, yeah. So we were basically cruising around and the ID detonated directly underneath me and just opened up the vehicle completely. Wow. And, uh, yeah, sucked me up, sucked me a little bit under. And, uh, and then, so my driver, he had a little bit of, um, a little bit of a head injury. So like a TBI, um, just from the pressure, his head hit the hatch with his helmet on. And then um, a couple of my air guards were a little bit banged up and nothing crazy. And then me, I was annihilated. And then all my other guys were um, knocked out unconscious. The whole vehicle was knocked out unconscious. I was the first one to wake back up. And I remember, it's I didn't crazy. think that I got hit with a bomb though. That's the thing. It's like, I was so good at fucking finding those things. Like I was the guy. That, yeah. I mean, I have videos on YouTube where I'm finding them throwing hand grenades and running and they're blowing up. You know, I But was, you can <laughs> see him from a distance on the ground. I, I was just good at understand. Looking. Can you explain exactly what that bomb is? Like what it looks like? Mm -hmm. You're saying is a there's a plate? Um, well, so what it is, a pressure plate. So what it is, they do all kinds of different things. It's they put like a piece of board and a piece of board and in between there, they'll put like sand or something yeah. and then, or they don't, or they just lay it. And then there's wire that, uh, that uh, basically becomes the charge. And as soon as these two, those two pieces push against each other, when it puts it two charges over, right. together, the explosives, wherever they have them wired out. They've got them all set in the ground. So they're really smart. So like mine, for example, like we, you know, we have a vehicle coming, here's the pressure plate. So the front tire hits it. So for me, they put the bomb back here. Gotcha. The explosives were actually the back here. So we actually ran over the explosives before we actually hit the pressure plate. Right. And then the, so what, they're not stupid. You can go on fucking Google and figure out where the you distance. Sit. They want to blow up where you are. Where I'm at. And they know whoever's hanging out of that hatch is the highest ranking guy in that vehicle. Jeez. Wow. So it's like targeted. It's thought out. It's thought out. Wow. I mean, they're, they're smart guys. They've been yeah. doing war their whole entire life. I was going to say it's war, you know. It's war. They've been doing their whole yeah, lives. Sure. And. You know, and so that's basically what happened. Pre the tire hit the pressure plate, the explosives were back, and it just detonated right beneath where I was standing at. T take me there real quick, though. You said you were the, f everyone was knocked out. Yeah. You were the first one to wake up. And yeah. So I woke up and I didn't think that we got blown up because what happened What'd was we think? went down in a big ditch, like goalie down in it and up. And then I remember just sitting there watching the vehicle kind of lift its, you know, its fucking nose is way up in the oh, air. Oh, because he's out, but the tank's still going. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. We were, this was before the explosion. Like we were just driving. And, oh. and so when the thing comes up, we came back down and, uh, and as soon as we came down, we just went a little, a few feet and then boom, the thing just went off. So when I woke up, I thought we had rolled our vehicle. Mm -hmm. Cause the last thing I saw was like this. And, and I wasn't fucking thinking, I, I wasn't in pain at the time. And yeah. I didn't think it, I saw dust everywhere, shit everywhere. And I was like, and I, and then I realized like, fuck, we got blown up. And I, even at that time, I didn't realize I was fucked up yet. I just remember looking at all my guys and yelling at them to get out of the vehicle, wake up and get out of the vehicle. Cause we've actually had bombs go off where guys get trapped or knocked out and whatever. And the vehicle catches on fire and they burn alive. We had, it happened to my commander, you know? And so you, the very first thing I'm thinking is like, get the fuck out of the vehicle because this thing's on fire. Yeah. There's smoke everywhere, you know? And so they start waking up and they fucking start bailing out of the vehicle and they get out of the vehicle. And that's when I try to like move. And I realize, fuck, I can't move. And I, I can't feel my legs. And then I uh, started, there was a, there was a like um, a strap that hangs from the ceiling. And so I went to grab it with this hand and this hand's messed up too because I banged it up real bad in the, in the explosion and I couldn't, it wasn't working. So then I was like, fuck. So I just started, I had a little light. I started like touching my like body with my hands, feeling everything. And uh, I just looked at my hands and I just had like oil and blood all over my hands and I was like, I thought I'd lost both my legs. I could kind of feel as much, as far as I could reach, I could feel I had something, but there was just so much blood everywhere. And then um, my guys got out of the vehicle. And then I guess they just realized like, where's fucking Sergeant Mitchell at? 
And then they just came in. And when they came in, they were yelling at me. I was like, I can't move. There's shit on me. And then I could just look at, I could tell the look in their eyes. They're like, oh, he's fucked up. Like I could just see it in him. And so when they picked me up, so one guy grabbed me from the back and lifted me and another one grabbed me. And I remember just trying to help them with that, you know, my one good like limb that I had at the time, try to pull myself up. I remember when uh, Baker, one of my fucking top tier soldiers, like picked me up from my legs and my right leg was just swinging around freely because I dislocated the knee, dislocated the ankle, just swinging around. My left leg was still there, but it was just battered and my pants had almost been blown off me. And so I could see all the blood and I had um my um very severe third, second and third degree burns all up my quads and stuff from the the batteries had exploded underneath the vehicle. So all the battery acid yeah. had been sitting on my skin and burning through my skin because the bomb blew my pants off pretty much. And I still have those pants. And so, um, yeah, they picked me up and they were getting me around the vehicle and they get me out and they get me under some cover from, you know, just in case enemy fire or anything comes. And then Doc, my doc, Doc Kirker, he comes running up to me and he's like an older cat. You know, and he's like, where's always, where's a Harley fucking bandana and shit. And then uh, he's just sitting there working on me. And I could even look, and they, they all love me. You know, these guys are my, these are some of my best friends. And uh, I could just remember him, like, I could tell he was stressing a little bit. Cause I've been around yeah. him dealing with shit. And I was like, how bad am I? He goes, you're, you're pretty fucked up. Yeah. He's like, just, I got you. Just relax. You know, he's like, you know, do you want morphine? I was like, yeah, give me a little bit of morphine. And, you know, he just got me IV'd up and was just trying to stop all the blood that he could. And. Next thing you know, I'm getting fucking tossed on a medevac. And uh, I, I could, even at that point, I knew I was bad because I remember they had my head like near the, the the side bay door of the helicopter. And I've flown in a helicopter so many times. And and I remember just being like looking and, and, and just being like, fuck, we're low to the ground. Like, son of a bitch, you know? But he just had that nose down. And he was just, that, that chopper mm. was moving to get me gotcha. to the they hospital. Were haul they were hauling ass. Yeah. And so... And the next thing I know, I'm getting unloaded in um, in Afghanistan. I got unloaded, and then I don't remember anything except I woke up one time in Germany um, from like a fucking flashback of the explosion, um, where I, I but I was in my bed. I, but if I I don't know, I felt like somebody came up behind me and hit my bed real hard and like scared me or something. But I felt like it was an explosion, and then I didn't wake up again until flying from Germany to the states. Um, I just remember waking up in, in a in a military aircraft where it was just tons of wounded vet soldiers in there and I get to see them all in the beds and asking for water. And they gave me like a little cap of water and then I just passed back out. And then, um, I woke up again because they were, they were conserving water. Yeah, they, no, uh, just because of medical. Probably, he was on yeah, meds. They were stuff. giving you stuff anyway. Yeah. They were giving was, me IV were stuff. It was probably just, IV. yeah, I probably just mouth. wet my mouth. Yeah. yeah there, I was fine. I wasn't dehydrated. It was just probably just, they really don't want to give you, they're not really supposed to give you like fluids yeah, yeah. like that, right. you know, cause they don't know what they're going to do to me when I land and get to the hospital, right. you know? So they gave me just wet my mouth a little bit. And, um, then I woke up in the ambulance. I don't know what kind of fucking truck it was. It's the medical truck. And I remember this, um, girl, she was in the military army and she was wounded, lost her leg. And she was like sitting there and I, she was pretty distraught. And I just remember trying to tell her like, it's going to be good. We're going, you know, we're going to the best place you're going to be okay. You know, I was just trying to calm her down a little bit. And I barely remember that, you know, I don't even mm -hmm. know why I was even talking to her. Like, I mean, I, I do know why I'm a, I'm a staff sergeant, you know, I'm just, I was going to say, you know, you're still showing that kind of leadership. leadership. Quality. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're she was you. pretty, she was stressing it. And then I remember going through the, the big doors of Walter Reed hospital in DC and seeing all the flags and all the doctors and nurses and people coming up to us. And then I, after that, I was in ICU for it, a it's, while. It's great. Like as he's telling us <clears> his story, I could see you, seeing it like yeah. you're seeing it and you're telling it and yeah. it's like so vivid and i it's recreating it in my brain yeah. as you're saying it and i wonder like you've probably told this story so many times i've and told it quite a bit i've lost the, the and, I, and i and i like to i do come I, through vividly like that every time yeah like you still feel yeah. the emotions so i've 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 uh i've cool i I've, feel really good about yeah. asking it then yeah now you're good mm -hmm. it doesn't bother you ask me whatever i don't get uh, distraught about nothing uh uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing. And, and it's because like, I've like lost like a lot of memory of like some of the things that I've been through and it sucks. You know, I've lost, like, I, I can't remember a lot of things from like my, my wartime over there with those guys, my boys and shit. Like I've just, over time I'm like losing memory on it, you know? And, and so when I get to like, kind of, yeah, I kind of think about it, like the going through the door. Cause I remember that very, yeah. very, the flags just kind of was on a gurney, just kind of getting pushed through it. And yeah, I woke up in ICU later and, uh, then I was in, um, I was bedridden for months, months. And, and then just, just was going under, uh, under so many surgeries. I mean, I've had that. When did they cut your leg off? Um, so what happened was, is they were trying to save it. I woke up in a big, I had a big halo around it and I was going through rehab with it. I kept having surgeries on it. So you were it, still and, for a while thinking you were going to. 
I was trying to yeah, two legs and walking again. Yeah. And I, what were they telling you? That you same, had a chance? They, they had a chance. Right. And uh, so I kept my leg for about six months. And then they were still like trying oh. to progress with it. And I just, I was like, I'm fucking done. Cut. Why? Pain or? Um, no progression. It and not just that. Dead. Yeah, not just that. They were just like, you know, when you're and you're in at Walter Reed, it's like the the number one amputee facility in the world. It's yeah. state of the art. You see these guys that are they're already progressing faster than you without a oh, leg. Like I'm sitting holding there, back, right? yeah, it's like holding me back and trying to hold on to something. That's yeah, and I'm in there. fucking pain. And and then you talk to the doctor, and, and he's I talk like, to well, doctors, if, I, if you did cut off, you might have a chance you, of like healing faster, faster and getting your day going quicker. Yeah. And you were like, well, then fuck it. Well, the thing was, like at that time, I'm 25, so. I mean, his whole thing too, and I and I even I said so. Like, what? I, he's like, you know, you know, down the road you're gonna have to have like you'll have to have more surgery. You know, you might have to have an ankle fusion. You might have to have this. You know, you're gonna have like arthritis. You're gonna, you know, he's like, give me all the all, but you're gonna have your leg. I'm like, fuck that. You're weighing it out right now. Yeah, yeah, I was like, just cut this fucking thing off. Then I was like, I even told him, I was like, why did we even wait this long? Like, yeah. you're telling me I could already be six months progressed right mm -hmm. now. Like, he and he goes, because we can't just do that. Like, if yeah. there's potential to save it, he goes, you can make that decision. And even when I made a decision, I had to go see three different psychiatrists just to like make sure I'm wow. mentally like making the I right get it, decision. Dude. You, you could, know? be, you could, they could, you could tell them later on that you, they tricked you into cutting your leg yeah. off and sue them for a everything. Rush into judgment oh, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. And you're on, no, no, you're, I'm, on, I'm on narcotics and I'm on yeah. a lot of shit. I'm distraught. I'm fucked up. Like, I'm actually. You know? I, I'm happy to know that they get oh, three no, people no, to yeah. check with you before oh, you cut they, your leg off. I went through three psychiatrists and then even then they were like, "Talk to your family about it Man. and then go from there." Good. And so, yeah, so I finally, everybody agreed and we all just realized like, and then I went in there and had the amputation and I swear, it's like, as soon as I came out, I mean, my mom and everybody could tell you, as soon as I came out, they cut my leg, I was waving that thing around. I was fucking, I felt like <laughs> so much pain had just been taken from me. Obviously I was on oh, drugs, wow. obviously yeah. I was on drugs, but I just knew like, I was like, all right, now we're about to fucking start progressing. Now we're about to start. Well, that's the best it, feeling. And, and I can only relate to this as yeah. much as I can without being an amputee, but from the numerous, me and Jason are like the king of injuries and been mm -hmm. through every surgery. Um, the best feeling is knowing that the surgery is done. Now yeah. it's time yeah. to heal. Right. It's, it's, it's now yeah. the healing begins. Yeah. It's, it's holding, sitting there waiting for something to happen that, right. that stresses you out the most. I was so having I mean. so many surgeries on that leg trying to save it. It was crazy. Right. Crazy. You know, washouts and surgeries and more washouts and surgeries. And, you know, I'm trying to, and, and with that, with, what was crazy with that is like at this time, my whole right leg is just in a splint. We haven't even done any reconstruction on my ankle or my knee yet because I have so many open wounds. They don't want to open me up anymore for infection oh, reasons shit. and stuff. So like I had to rehab this and not just that, we're trying to get me to walk. So this leg was fine if they put it together, like they, they, you know, they, they, it was dislocated, so it's back together there. And I, and I had a moon boot on. So I could do a little bit of rehab with this leg because I could put a little bit of weight on this leg. So, and then as soon as I got, I could pull full weight bearing on this leg, then we started doing surgery on this leg. And it was just like, fuck, like, you know, and then the whole time I'm waiting to do surgery on my arm because I, you know, I have a massive, this whole thing was just a big hole. And it was just, it, it was crazy. It was just a very long process. And then surgery, rehab, then surgery, rehab. And it was just, Fucking nightmare. Four years. Do you think your military training helped you survive this injury? Um, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say like the actual like training. I would definitely say that like the mentality. Yeah. The mentality for sure. The mentality lives in me now. Because I feel like everybody I, I know who's a soldier. Well, not everybody, but most of them have that one thing where I'm like, <clears throat> even if you were born with absolutely no gifts and talent at all, they gave you drive. They gave you, you get up and you go. When someone asks you to do something, you fucking do it. Yeah. And that goes a long way in life. Yeah. I know I met a guy that was an intern for a long time who had a lot. He went through a lot and he was, he was fucked. But he fucking, I mean, I was like, I like you because mm -hmm. I could tell you act weird because you've been through so much shit and people find it awkward to be around you. But I like you. You're a real dude. You know, like if I, if we're going to do a job, you do the job and, and you will not stop until mm -hmm. it's done. And I can tell he got that from being in the military. I'm like, it's yeah. a good thing to have because. Sometimes life kicks you in the dick, and mm -hmm. if you just keep going, yeah, you can. You, you nine times out of ten, things get better. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that I mean. There's a lot uh, at times. I think like yeah, what I've been through is like not a lot of. Not everybody can do it. It's a no. mentality that's been I think been put into. Yeah, me. You'd want to give up. Yeah, I mean, fuck, I have many times. I'm not gonna lie. I've sat on the edge of the bed like many times, thinking like, "What the fuck up. do I do this shit?" I feel like when people say they haven't given up, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe you, but that doesn't mean that you haven't said to yourself, "Fuck, I think I'm gonna give up." Yeah, that's yeah. it. I had those thoughts creep yeah. in, and sure. then and then the other part that, that we're all here is, "No, nah, fuck that." You know what I mean? I ain't going out yeah. like that. Yeah. But 
don't even think that there wasn't many times where I've just said flat out to myself, that's it. Where you felt well, oh, yeah. yeah. up. And oh, yeah. then I wake I, up in the morning and go, really, I, dude, yeah. really? Yeah. Like, no, man, that's not how you do Everybody it. has that. And then not only did he slap the weak side of, uh, slap the weak part of him, you know, and continue moving on, but fast forward 11 years later, we're here. You've done your thing in powerlifting. <clears throat> you're now talking about making a pro debut and fighting yeah. five months. Like, you know, there's, crazy. there's so many possibilities yeah. that you're still showing that are. How's your good leg? Like, how's your knee and your ankle? As so a my, person that's had a lot so, of knee surgery. So here, weird is that my amputee legs are actually my best leg. It's stronger. It's it makes sense to me because no. if you said that the bomb blew your fucking knee, at, dislocated. It dislocated. I, had, I have had every ligament in that thing redone, right. and I have oh. no, I have no meniscus in so that the, knee at all. So the good all. leg has had ACL meniscus. Yeah, everything's like gone. Yeah. I've had, I've had um, uh, new ligaments put in. So I have five screws in my knee, and then six pins and a but plate. Not, in but not, but not a knee reconstruction. I haven't had a full knee replacement. Right, yet. but but all the ligaments the bones, have been replaced. The bones are yours. Wow. But the, the rest bones of are mine, isn't. and I have no meniscus at all. Yeah, yeah. No. you don't need that. Nah, it just, no just sucks. I haven't had a meniscus in just, both just my knees sucks. for like. 10 I've got like thirty yeah. percent left in both yeah, knees. Just you sucks. don't need that shit. But no, it just <laughs> like it just this this whole leg just this leg's like you know it just causes me more issues than my prosthetic side. To be honest, it's crazy. That right? makes yeah. sense to me. Yeah. As a skateboarder that's yeah. had a lot of knee oh. injuries. Yeah. They don't, they do a lot of great stuff, yeah. but they don't fucking no. it's not like uh, you know, yeah. I'm gonna go to a doctor and get a surgery and now I'm just twenty five. Like they haven't got that far. No. I've, I've been wanting to ask Michael Bisbing, uh, who had a complete knee replacement. Mm-hmm. He's got mm-hmm. that 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 uh yeah. that metal looking thing in his knee. Yeah. And so I wonder, you know, I mean obviously the He's gives running you, every day. He's running every day. That's the thing. Yeah, he he yeah. was standing up on it the day after surgery. And yeah. even though it was one of the most painful things he's ever done, he said, mm-hmm. I wonder not having all those ligaments that were paining you, you yeah, know, that, yeah. that, that were that were partially torn and torn. Now you don't have those ligaments yeah. anymore. Now it's kind of just one or two things that you have to keep track of. I wonder if it's yeah. better or worse. I know for a him. couple of guys have knee replacements and I see them running too. And I'm like, fuck. Because like I like I I swear to God, I I and as crazy as it sounds, it's like I'll see videos on Instagram and it's like guys just running, and I'm like, fuck, I miss running. Wow. I just wish I could just stride out like that. Because yeah. I loved running. Is that like when you're married and you see a girl walk by that isn't that hot? You wish you would fuck, you could fuck her? Yeah. Is it like that? Same. Because sometimes I'm yeah. like, I wish I could fuck her. And I'm like, you don't really wish you could fuck her. You just yeah. want to fuck her every time. Shut up. It's just because you can't. I yeah. think that it's, might be it. Because I can't run. So, yeah. As a guy that can run, yeah. fucking, you, you want, don't want to run. Yeah, it's fucking overrated, oh dude. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for making it relatable to all of our viewers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, guys, like, God, that's probably what it feels like. I remember like that girl the other day. But yeah, no, so everything's just coming, kind of coming along, man. It's just, I, I don't know why I do some of the stuff that I do, like, you know, powerlifting, now boxing. I mean, I got into very serious competitive golfing right after my injury because at that time, that was all I was able to do as an athlete was like golf. So, and I got really mm-hmm. good at it. I made the U.S. soldier wounded golf team, played against the British in England. I mean, I got crazy, sweet. man. Damn good. Yeah, I got, I became like a four handicap uh, golfing, you know, golfing, the lower the handicap, yeah. the better. So, and I'd never golfed really before. Um, just, just, I just get addicted to something and I, you're work driven, really dude. Yeah, driven, man. driven Very and structure. Driven. I have to have driven and structure. That's just the way it is for me. Then I got in the power thing. Now I just want to do this boxing thing and, and it's, I'll train three well, times a day if I can, you I know, feel like just the way it is, but. I don't, I don't know what's going to be after boxing. I don't it know. It couldn't go as worse as it did for Ben Askren this weekend. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's all. Oh, yeah. I'm, and, 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 and Jason really, on some of the previous shows, so he had seen some... Yeah, I, I'm not... I'm just saying, like, he, he showed some insight. He said that he looked like Ben had to get an uppercut, and he right. had some hope, is what I'm trying to say. He, there was some hope that Askren might have brought it home, but... <clears throat> But boy, he um he fucked up so bad. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It really does blow my mind that MMA guys. I know this probably going to get people mad, but I can't believe how bad some MMA guys can be with their hands. And I know that you know there's the MMA game. There's so many different facets mm-hmm. of mixed martial arts, but goddamn boxing. You know what I mean? Like it's right there. You know, it's right in front of you. And your hands are right there. You got to wrestle. You're gonna whatever you're gonna do. This is. You got to have a little bit of this. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of blown away that you only have a little bit. I think yeah. it's crazy that anyone is in the UFC and has a little bit. That one blows yeah. my mind. It, it's 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 much easier to take a, a hardcore wrestler and say, this guy's got some fast switch muscle fibers. He's a killer on the mat. Let's teach him how to box. That takes two years, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 but you to, said fast switch. Ben doesn't have that. That's, <laughs> I don't think he ever That's did. what I was getting to. Ben... Is an uh, it doesn't look like it physically, but he's an athlete. That's why. What's his nickname again? Uh, 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 um, funky, funky, right? Yeah. Because he's got a funky style. His body movement is mm-hmm. the way that he looks. That, but he's had success. 
but he never had that quick twitch. Mu- he wasn't explosive, didn't have that muscle fiber. And so it didn't correlate. It didn't relate into, into striking that push mm-hmm. pull type of muscle. And you just saw it uh, when he hits pads. It's always and forever going to be that continual 70%. It's not explode mm-hmm. and retract. Yeah. He doesn't have it. So, I mean, I don't know. You may know. Uh, like how, how many years has Ben been in the in like mixed martial arts? For, for a long, long yeah. time. I mean, and, and, about and, and, 10, Jake, and Jake Paul's been boxing maybe two years. Three right. years. It's like, Dead. Yeah, but Fuck. as a guy yeah. that did mm. this before him, mm-hmm. if you train for three years at boxing mm-hmm. and you fight a guy that isn't that great yeah. in the UFC at yeah. boxing, yeah, you fucking knock him out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I knocked out a dude that was supposed to, he had a real job mm-hmm. as a fighter. Yeah. And he got knocked out by my crappy three year training ass. Yeah. <laughs> because if you if you train boxing for th- and, and you're slightly athletical and you train properly, like not just I go a couple of days, like you train like you're a real fighter. Right. And you and you have athletic ability. Yeah, there's a right hand when you pivot from a <clears throat> from a boxing coach that's yeah. trained you, and you have you know it, it. Fundamentally, I feel like some people just don't have it. It's weird. I don't know why, but some people can train boxing their whole life and they don't have a heavy shot. They don't have uh, fluidity. Mm-hmm, they just right. don't have it. Right. Some people don't mm-hmm. do well. I don't read well. That's what. Whatever things mm-hmm. happen. But <laughs> if you are slightly athletical and you have a technique, that right hand is going to be way harder than Robbie Lawler's ground and pound. Yeah. And I feel like we saw that this weekend. Like, yeah, we, like if he could take Robbie Lawler's uh, ground and pound, people saying that, how so is Shea stupid. Paul going to knock yeah. him out? Yeah. I'm like, you guys, I got in trouble with him. I took shit on Chris Jericho this weekend. Yeah. And all his fans attacked me on they Twitter. Can't, yeah, he's probably got a yeah. shot. And I'm like, good, come at me. I don't fucking care. Like, I think he's like, dude, Chris Jericho's twice the man you'll ever be more accomplished. I'm like, I, I agree with way more accomplished, but we're talking about a boxing fight. Right. I've had boxing fights. He hasn't. He's in fake fighting. What was and the I, comment? And the only that reason you were... I would call it fake fighting is because because Jericho said, nice one with your fake fight. On behalf of Ben and Jake. Oh, that it was fixed. And I was yeah, like, "That's crazy." I'm it's... like, "That's crazy coming from a guy that has only had fake fights to call this fake." Yeah. Because right. trust me, dude, that was a real fight. Ben Askren got really knocked out. Yeah. Like if you if the yeah. ref started ended it, watch the tape. Yeah. When you when anybody in professional boxing when the ref says and walk to me forward, and you yeah. walk that yeah. way, <laughs> you're fucking out, you're dude. Fucking That's out. what happened. Yeah. yeah. And the right the right hand landed flush, and you could see did. you could see the process leading up to it yeah. right before that. He had thrown that exact same punch about 10 seconds yeah. before that. Yeah. And it just, and just missed. missed. And, he just missed. and Ben didn't do anything. No. Right. Ben just did nothing. Missed. He yeah. said, Ben didn't react. All I have to do is step into it two inches mm-hmm. more yeah. and this will land yeah. flush. He threw the exact same combo right. right before that. He landed flush. I don't know if if Jake Paul could go and be an all-sport athlete, play other sports very good and, and athleticism like that. But when it comes to boxing athleticism, he's got quick twitch muscle fibers. Yeah, he yep. does. Yeah. He's got good footwork. He's elusive. When ben ever, whenever Ben would come forward, he, he'd evade very well. And he's got power. So he has the things that it takes to be a fighter. Yeah. Now he has to say, okay, I'm not going to, I can't keep picking these guys that Ben, that just had hip surgery. He's retired, 39 years old. And he's, by the way, the fattest person in the history Jesus of Christ. I don't even and, know. And, and, and how can our you, worst striker in all yeah. of MMA, no yeah. disrespect to Ben, but you can't, now you can't hand pick these guys yeah. anymore. Now, if you're going to legitimize, legitimize yourself, we have to give them some stiffer competition. Well, he, he has to be on equal playing he field. Just, he just, he wants to fight Fury's brother. Is that what he's saying? He just yeah. admitted that, but but he's but he out says like five it. Other guys. But, he's, but he says that he says that. But then he goes, "But your big brother has to fight on the same card." And I'm like, "You know that's not going to happen." He man. he's just kind of playing the game. He's playing the game, and 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 that's and, and here's the thing: is like I, I, when people see me box, they're like, "Dodge, dude, you versus Jake Paul." And I'm like, "Listen, I get it. You guys don't like Jake Paul's like demeanor. Mm. I get it. He's a fucking kid. Yeah, yeah fuck. That's like." richer than everybody you know what i mean like yeah. he's living a fucking wild ass life he's on this fucking ride right now he's yeah has he got has he picked these fights but at the end of the day you can't sit there and say he can't fucking fight he's literally knocked everybody out and yeah. if you if you don't have hands you can't knock by every you can't knock people out he's got power he's he knocking knows fuckers out and, he, and he's and he's actually getting better yeah. he looked way better this time than he did the fight first fight compared to the second fight mm. he was moving a lot better he looked decent this last fight yeah, and I mean, look decent against Ben Askren. Yeah, Ben Askren. I mean, and who the thing I thought is, maybe might have had some sort of what they say. Ben. I, I mean, I'm like Ben Askren is the great Ben Askren. If he and he and he said over and over again, I didn't train boxing. My wrestling was so good that I did not train yeah. boxing. And I'm like, okay, well now you have 12 weeks. He's such an athlete. Why could he not figure out boxing? It's really mm-hmm. not that hard. But when you see, like I said, somebody's hate boxing yeah and he has that body yeah Yeah. he could train for 10 years and never look like a boxer Mm -hmm. he doesn't have it yeah 
If yeah. you fight somebody that does have it, I, man, just look at my life. I fought and I beat a guy. And then it was like, man, you're good. You should fight another guy. I was like, I agree. I will. And then I fought a guy that beat the fuck out of me because that's what happens. Yeah. You're going to fight a UFC fighter and a shit one that can't box. And then people hype you up until you fight somebody where I'm like, you yeah. know what? I beat that guy. But I wonder if I could beat this guy. Yeah. And then this guy, as Alan knows, there's levels mm. to this game. Yeah. Then you meet a guy. Like I go to Sax. It's like hit, fight sparring him today. Yeah. He's like, there's a, I could have hit you then. I could have hit you then. I could have hit you then. Yeah. And I could tell. Don't don't go spracking off on the mic about knocking everybody out, yeah. Jason. Joe Ban on his worst day could finish you quick. Right. And Joe Ban's not the greatest boxer in the world. So don't be like, oh, Conor McGregor, you're next. Like, dude, do you know That's how disrespectful crazy. that is? Yeah. yeah. But Nate Diaz, you're going to knock him out in three rounds? Sign that, yeah, and have Nate Diaz fight you yeah. because Nate didn't. That's this is and this yeah. Is, good luck with that one. Yeah, I good, would still say good luck with that. <laughs> I would way rather fight Nate Diaz than fight Carl. I fought Carl Kingsbury. Yeah, I think mm. Nate Diaz is a better boxer than Carl mm. Kingsbury, but yeah. Carl Kingsbury is a giant dude, right? Yeah, who's like six. Nate will touch six. you up. Kingsbury will knock you out. Yeah, one hand. And, and I feel like that's his thing is fighting little guys, fighting guys that you know you can't get hit. Because I, I can tell when I box guys that uh, with ten with with 16s on and then we have an MMA fight with four-ounce gloves on, mm -hmm. my heart rate is already up before we fought because I'm under the impression now that you don't even have to be that good yeah. of a puncher. If you land flush, I'm probably in trouble. Yeah. I don't I, know if it's I, exactly I think, true. Though. I think Jake would have a really hard time with Nate Diaz. Oh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Nate it, it Diaz would, is a fucking athlete. Is yeah, Nate I mean, Diaz is. 190 and, 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 when he walks around? Well, Nate Diaz does kind of blow up, but yeah. he's, not, he's not he a gets true... the munchies, though, He's not right? a... Yeah, 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 probably it's probably not from, so, like, getting yeah. jacked. It's but from it's getting so fat. It's so crazy, he's, he's, I mean, he's a freak-ass athlete. But, but, but like talking about size... He's crazy. Right. He's got great cardio, great pressure, and puts combinations together once he gets in your face. Jake is just... He needs to start leveling the playing field now. Yeah. He's been handpicking opponents. We know yeah. that, right? And, yeah, and enough's gets, enough. The worst guy. But enough's enough. Get somebody that's actually, if you want to legitimize yourself as a boxer, that makes sense. And also the weight. Like, do we don't even know how did weight did Jake cut weight? Like they I he weighed know. in at 192. Ben was like as fat as he could be at 191. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, 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 get somebody that you guys are actually the same weight. Yeah. Has some yeah. remotely you know, decent. It's striking. coming. He he has has to, I don't believe he. Well, I don't believe he's to. scared. I believe that he's baby stepping it because it's yeah. a career move. I think he's baby stepping. I also think he's like playing the field to make this money. I was gonna yeah, say like it's a, it's a business. The guy's making yeah. more. He made a million dollars. So that's, Dana that's this what. I, that, so that's what I. That's, that's, I know. Did so that's what, actually make that bet? So with Snoop Dogg, I don't know. Snoop was saying yeah, that he two did million, two million. Yeah. He but here, so here's, so here's my thing, right? Is everybody's I, Triller was a shit show. I watched that whole thing. Worst was, thing yeah. ever. See Fuck. the billionaire fight some pop star. That was the most unfair thing I've ever uh, seen in was, the world. I was like, yeah, really? Yeah. You guys got paid, and now you're telling me six figures? You got six figures for that fight? Okay, so yeah. for example, for, so for example, so here's the thing with Triller, right? Is so for example, for any UFC, like let's say uh, on the main card, the the first fight of the main card, what do those fighters probably make that fight? Oh, uh, ten and ten, twelve and twelve. Thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ten, ten thousand. These Stephanie motherfuckers. Octagon, ten more to win. These motherfuckers made six figures from those yeah. shittiest fighters, and I'm like sitting and there, and possibly like, pay per view points. Yeah, too. and po yeah, and I'm sitting there like, every fucking UFC fighter should leave and go to Triller because they're gonna get paid. They're gonna do one fight. And they're gonna make more. In yeah, but one they fight. won't. But they won't get the fight because you don't have the other. You don't the have the other thing. The, you have to have a. You have to have a thing, have have to, a thing yeah. where you have yeah. to have. Yep. I can. I look tough, but Jake can beat me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's one yeah. thing you have to have, yeah. or. There's this like uh, I've got a really big podcast. I'm a really giant right. musician who Something. hits pads. Yeah, I race cars and I box a lot. Like yeah. Ken Block could get a fight. Yeah, you know what I mean like people that uh, absolutely you know Kerry Hart did, could get a fight. Did you see Tyron Woodley in the locker room? I yeah, did. That guy. I did. Who is that guy? I, I, I got to tell you, whoever his boxing coach is for Jake Paul, the, the amount of disrespect right, right there. And, and look, okay, good. Wait, what happened? I didn't see. I didn't so, catch so, that. So uh, it was. Uh, I, I, think, I think what it was was um. It looked like Woodley was watching him wrap his hands. You got to have yeah. somebody make sure that the next yeah. thing. So Woodley's in there by himself, uh, watching Jake Paul get his hands wrapped in, and and Jake Paul's trainer is there, yeah. and he's just mouthing he's got away. Boxing gloves in his hand. He's like, he's like, you don't know nothing about this. You don't know nothing about this. And Woodley's yeah. playing it pretty cool, and he's saying, you know, look, I got six championships at home. You don't know nothing about this, and this and yeah. that. But the guy was just like a little barking yeah, dog. Willie's no chop. I mean, like, right? I, I mean, but it's Willie's so coming obvious. Off Everybody's the, the, just the amount of disrespect, though. Yeah. It was just like you don't, you don't like. If it, it's because it, all bets are off, dude. It, you know, the, yeah. the first if Jake Paul can talk, and somebody yeah. in, the, in the actual UFC can tweet back. 
then yeah. this dickhead can talk to yeah. Tyron Woodley. But, and and it's, it's just making the world be like that. That You can just mouth off to anyone and do whatever because these kind of people right here, yeah. that, that just mouth off. But I'm looking at you Woodley. You might get a fight and, with and Woodley I'm, from this. You realize uh, that? Like yeah. he that, might that guy, be on a that guy or Jake? That guy. The, right, right. So yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Like, so hopefully like, this, that guy this doesn't. This whole thing, like, we were like disrespectful, he get a fight. but it shows that it pays. It, it the does. guy was talking about boxing, and maybe the guy does, uh, I don't know, his coach. He might be a ter terrific boxer. He said boxer. That he was a champion boxer. But you're going to talk to Woodley like that, who, let's be realistic. Was just if we met in an alley one night you and there was nobody yeah. around, <laughs> oh, yeah. you wouldn't survive. No. I wouldn't let go of the show. Nobody's here to pull me off of you. You would die that day. So don't talk to me about boxing gloves like. I was so fired yeah, up. Like, yeah. I, like I saw Daniel Cormier say the same thing. Yeah. He's offended yeah. on his behalf. Yeah, it was but that, disrespectful. But, but that's part and parcel of this whole gimmick. Like, yeah. the, you let the gimmick in the door, mm -hmm. and now you think they're going to. Now keep everybody's yeah, everybody's it's, chirping. Everybody's yeah. chirping. Yeah. I think I Poirier's think chirping to Jake. There's everyone a, should get a little, little Masvidal. Wild world, man. Everyone yeah. should get a little on Masvidal's tip and just start striking fools. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. what do you know about these? I, 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 I kind of want to know about those, you yeah. dickhead. Yeah. Who the fuck is this guy just talking just to me just right shut now? Shut him up, because yeah. his whole crew mm. is now getting more and more confidence. You should have beat all those dudes in that room and Jake Paul. Fight's over. That's the one thing I think Masvidal when he came through is like. He's fucking. He'll he'll bust you up in the right. back. He doesn't give a fuck. It puts people it, back in line. Like it's he, a respect thing. Like how yeah, it's, just, it's just disrespect, you know. And and I, it's like same thing. Like yeah, Jake Paul pops off at people. And sh I guarantee you, he didn't pop off to Masvidal, even though they're cool together. I get it. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like Masvidal's cool with him. And, and I gotta say, even yeah, Jake, oh, of course he is. Even of course. Paul, <laughs> this is a prostitution. Even Jake Paul ring, kind, of, kind of don't even think that that. Don't even yeah. think Masvidal even yeah. fucking knows that. Does, dude. Does, oh no, yeah. probably not. He's not like, oh, here he comes. Like fucking yeah, here he comes. All right. Oh, fucking uh, Mike Perry sparred Jake Paul. I wonder who got paid yeah. for that sparring session. Yeah, then they, when they, you tell the guy, you really got me. You know why he said you really got me? Because you just gave him like 30 grand to punch yeah. with you for five rounds. Yeah. So I, that, I saw that I saw that actually today you disagree, about the, Joe the, the, the Perry thing. That. And that, I'm like... You disagree? Oh, no, no, no. With the, with the Jake Paul thing? With the, the Mike Perry Mike thing. Perry? I thought you were looking at me no. like... No, 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 no. no. I was happen. thinking because I know somebody that went and sparred with the Jake Paul crew and uh, he didn't even get paid. He didn't even get paid. And, oh. and and I was like, why would you not have hit yeah. those guys up for like a tremendous so amount well, of money? Well, a good guy, a name would get paid. Right, right. Yeah. And, and you would think Mike Perry obviously would have got paid pretty decent. But um, those Mike, guys kind of uh, ducked it, me. It, it also, Sorry, but it makes me think that like Mike Perry is kind this? of a good I one. went on Logan Paul's podcast. I was like, I got my gear right now, ready to spar. And he's like, man, we could maybe do it like tomorrow or something. And then his coach was like, yeah. we could spar on the weekend. I'm like, okay. And then it just never happened? No. Nope. <laughs> they probably would check your videos. I'm like, no, fuck that one. <laughs> Took some balls nah. to do that, man. To go yeah, into their, their place and yeah. bring your gear back. <laughs> your, your, his whole squad is there. I already said I fucking. Do yeah. you think I give a fuck about a pole brother? I fought Shane Carwin. I don't yeah, give yeah, a that, fuck about a pole uh, brother. That was wild. Props to you, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that good. Was I mean, wild. it was one hand, but it was still that one hand was coming. That yeah. one hand's bigger than both your hands. And he's a way, <laughs> and he's way better of a boxer. So yeah. I was like, this is such a shit deal. Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, it was a trailer was a shit show. But they made more money than everybody. So. Did, did. Wait, they didn't make as much money as the UFC did. I don't know. Well, I, I mean, know. the still, UFC still, was, you know, it wasn't a paper. You can't wasn't compare. You know, they reviews. timed it where the fight, the main I know they did. We were the fucking same. dying. I paused the UFC. Yeah. I was like, let me get the shit yeah. show out of the way. And then let me watch Bobby yeah. Knuckles because so, I don't want anybody disturbing. So we were on. I was, I, I, that's funny how they did that. I worked. I, I worked. The yeah, UFC, was on, so yeah. I was on set and we're like, all right, like I, we have to be focused on the UFC, but we all want to see the shit show as well. So like we were all stealing it on our phones and we're like watching the shit show. <laughs> and as I was so happy when it was over because like thank God. And then you go and you watch Bobby Knuckles, you watch yeah. you, you watch Robert Whitaker, and you're like, holy shit, this is art. This guy no, it is was high a, level. It was a Deep, fight. Just God. offense. He's defense, the greatest. Strategies. Yeah. It was amazing, and it just made you realize, yeah. okay, like that was shits and giggles for that was fun for a second, yeah. but now this is like this is passion. This is this is pure. He's my favorite right here. When you see how good he is and how he talks after the fight, and then you see Jake Paul, so humble. It's like. Okay, Bobby Knuckles would fucking murder Jake Paul in a boxing fight. Fucking murder. Yeah. And then MMA, now you're really dead. But even him, like, oh, Izzy said, uh, nice work, my son. Yeah, my son. Yeah. And then and then Bobby's like, ah, oh, I mean, he, he, did, like, that's he did win the last fight. So, you know, he has that to say. Yeah. So polite. But I'm practicing, so I'll be ready. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, you just cat. You said that, yeah, man. You, yep, good for you. Nice tweet, but make no mistake. I've got some new shit. I'm gonna knock you. I'm gonna tear your fucking head off. But instead of saying that, he just said, you know, I'll, 
I've been working, so we'll see what happens that, in the that's future. That's kind of Robert's angle too. Everybody, the gentleman, has been, he's he a is, gentleman, yeah. and and everybody, just like Jake Paul, and we're talking about. Everybody like calls them out, right? I, I I do it all the time. Every time, every time they say, "Who's next?" I go, "Me." Just you know, hey, maybe he'll 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 respond to it or whatever. Maybe he wants to fight me, but. Everybody wants to fight Izzy if because the the middleweight division in UFC right now is so I don't competitive. Want to. Been, <laughs> well, I, don't I mean, wanna, if, I'll fight Jake Paul, but that, I don't want to yeah, fight Izzy. Yeah, if you're trying yeah. to be a middleweight contender, there was three yeah. middleweight fights, three weekends in a row, and so yeah. all of those winners um, are, are, are are lobbying trying to get that fight against Izzy. Here comes Bobby Knuckles right there. He Whitaker he puts on a flawless performance, and you would think he's the first one to go. I'm the guy. He goes, whatever happens, happens. You know, yes. like he's just so cool, and it just makes you go, that's the dude. That's yeah. the guy that gets Easily. it right there. He's and not he looks for so nothing. good. He let his, his, yeah, he his, his work do the talking. Yeah. He looked amazing. And Gaslam's got some hands, too. So it's just, Gaslam's a gamer because yeah, it takes gamer. two to tango, right? Yeah. They if were Gaslam would have got knocked yeah. out and not came back in that first round after the oh, head yeah. kick, yeah. he stayed on the, the foot on the pedal. He kept yeah, trying to yeah. finish the fight for five yeah. rounds. He goes into the corner of the fourth and fifth round. Rafael Cordell is saying, I need something out of you. He came and tried to finish the fight yeah. as badly hurt as he was. That fight took two people. It just showed the. The levels in this game that oh, yeah. that, that Whitaker has it, man. He's the guy. Yeah, he, he looked Whitaker looked crazy. Yeah, I, I don't think Gaslam had a bad day either. I think he looked, no, he looked very good. dangerous, yeah. and I, did, I I would hate whoever has to fight him next. They're gonna be in the shit. Did yeah. you guys watch the entire card of UFC? Most yeah. of it. Yeah, it was, I found, yeah. and you know, I was working the show, so I couldn't be too judgmental on it. Nice but, um, work on the Orlovsky, by the way. Well, Orlovsky, thank yeah. you. I know, I, know. I was worried about that right one. Yeah, I was worried I'm about getting that one too. Better at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, I thought there was some questionable calls though, man. I had three fights on that card that I didn't disagree with, and I thought the the, the judging was a bit off. Um, in that card, I don't know the Luis Pena fight. You saw that one, Luis Pena versus um Alex Munoz. Yeah. I thought Alex probably took that one. The girl fight as well, Jessica Panay yeah. against uh her name was like. Godinez, uh, yeah, Godinez, Lupi, yeah, 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 yeah. Lupi right? Godinez, and Jessica like is a friend and I love her, and, and I was so happy to see the emotions of that victory. It was really fun to watch, but at the same time, I was like, damn, I thought I thought Lupi won, yeah. and there was numerous calls in that card that kind of um, I didn't know if I agreed with, but it was still fun, man. And, and again, to, to top it off with that uh, master class by Whitaker, would have been good to see a uh, undercard fight that was. That didn't happen because Shit. somebody got pushed at the weight. You know what? It really does need to terrible. fucking pipe it down, man. Yeah. Fuck. That I know was you're a badass, but like, don't fucking burner. fight people at the weigh-ins, dude. Yeah. It sucks, man. That was going to be such a good fight. We were also let down. And, and, and sick of everybody doing that. I feel concuss- like for the sake of the sport, people like Robert Whitaker. That's what you want, gentlemen. Gentlemen that yeah. will kill you when <laughs> yeah. the fucking bell goes, and then when the bell, the, when the last bell goes. Gentlemen again. I'll say this though. When that push happened, everybody that was there, the press, they were like, oh, they loved is, it. This is going to be I a know, money my Instagram fight. was just that video, yeah. that video. And, and like, then when Man. it got pulled from the card, I mean, I, we just felt heartbroken. It was going to be such a, a firefight, but they'll reschedule it. But it's just hard. It's crazy to imagine that it was a hard shove, but from a shove like that, that he got a sprained neck and a, and concussion, a concussion from that. Yeah. I mean, he just wasn't Severe prepared. whiplash. Yeah. A little whiplash and, uh, you know, being dehydrated when you get hit like that oh, yeah. unexpected. I guess it just wasn't pleasant. So, shame. Hopefully, they put that on a new card. You got you got the card coming up this weekend? Though? Yeah. I got some three pay-per-view. Usman, Miles of Vidal. Gotcha. Rematch. Yeah. Wailing. <clears throat> That's going to be a, not, Yeah. And then they've already Shashanko, got the politics played into that. One. Yeah, man. You know what? I've always loved Rose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she's she's on one right now, too. I haven't seen her this pissed off in a minute. Yeah. She, she, she does not, really she does not like that girl. I think she's maybe she trying to find like, something. She, she sure don't like the girl, but it seems like she doesn't like. She got a. She getting a little twisted with the the communist stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, come on, uh, better well, dead, better dead than red. I just don't <laughs> so think Wei like, is. Uh, I mean, yes, okay, she's from China, China. <laughs> but I don't think she's like you fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Snowflake, I'm gonna kill you. But in I wonder. Of, I yeah. wonder if it's because of like Rose's, like where she comes from, maybe of like the whole you know Russia communist type thing, and she. Well, she says yeah. she says that, but I. But, but, then, but you're saying like, you don't think homegirl's like a communist, like yeah. Like what? why even put why even put her in it? You know what I mean? Like oh yeah. you're Chinese, I'm gonna beat you on the yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Like whoa whoa whoa! Yeah. Yeah. She's never. I never saw. Wait, I mean I know she doesn't speak English, and there's somebody speaking for her, but yeah. I don't think the person that's speaking for her is lying. Yeah, I think she's saying what Wailing is saying, and so yeah. far she seems to be a pretty nice. No, person. she seems like a pretty good yeah. girl. She's yeah. like you she, know? she's a beast too, though. Yeah, so yeah, Rose yeah. can have her hands full. And ever that since girl. her last fight, I see her mm-hmm. like with uh, with um just just training like in Thailand and different places with all these great fighters. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not saying she can go to Thailand for a week and get better, 
But I just feel like she's been evolving. She's yeah. not just stagnant at the gym that she came from. She's been traveling the world, doing training with different really good people, Sanshai and other people like that, teaching her little tricks. So it's going to be a tough fight. But Rose is a girl that... Oh, that's that, a banger. Yeah, she's yeah. a banger. You can't underestimate her because she doesn't look. She looks real docile, like a little flower, right? Yeah. She can break in half. And she gets in there. She moves so effortlessly, yeah. man. She's such a little She's one of my, she's one of my favorites for, like, out of the females. I she's like really watching good. her. I like yeah. watching her. Fun fight. matchup. She power the, versus yeah. finesse somewhere. She has the better technique for sure. Yeah, but 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 Wei Li, I mean, she's powerful everywhere. I mean, uh, your Chechik went the distance with her, and she obviously got a disfigured head yeah. from the, in the process, but she was holding her own. Yeah. yeah. And, and could have kind and of gone either way. Right. You know, it was, it was and your Chechik fight. got fucking dusted by Rose. Yes. Dusted. This is true. Twice. It's MMA math, but this is true. I know. That's probably yeah. not the way it works, but I'm just saying, yeah. Wei, Ling, Wei Ling took a lot of shots from Joanna that I don't think is the yeah. same as as uh, Rose. I think Rose's shots are a and lot Rose, harder. That's got to mm. be giving her confidence. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the kind of, you just got to find things that are good for you and you just, you rely on those. Say, look what I was able to do and she wasn't able to do and let's build on these. Yeah. And if somebody picks you up, don't hold on to the armbar. Let it go. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't be fine. <laughs> Dumped. Yeah, on that Kimura grip. This show is in Florida. First time UFC, first time any sport uh, I believe is going back to full crowd. What is the number? You were, you had the number. Dude, Uriah Hall and Chris Weidman, yeah. twenty something thousand yeah. people. Do you know that Uriah Hall, Chris Weidman's on that undercard or on the main card? Anthony Smith and Jim Crute. Oh yeah, yeah. Anthony was saying he wanted that fight. He he kind of liked that matchup. Yeah, well, these are these are guys that are on the chopping block if they lose that, right? Like Weidman um, losing. Weidman and, and... Weidman might be coming off of a win. Yeah, I think. Really? Yeah, Weidman. I mean, you know. Realistically, he's somewhat past his time, um, but I think he came off of a win his last fight. Because he's trying to make a little bit of a run right now. But um, well, I hope it works out. I like him. Yeah, yeah. always like. No, him. Wyman's dope, man. He's he's real cool. Um, uh, Hall, he's fighting Hall. You said you're right, yeah. Hall, and you you're right, Hall's coming off his last fight was the retirement fight where he retired Anderson Silva. Right. So it's yeah. been a minute, but he was able to knock out Anderson. Mm -hmm. So they're on that pay per view. Yeah, it's a crazy fight. Uh, it's a very exciting fight with people that are very, very high level, unlike this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that really, that really Masvidal let me down, man. Gonna be... All I yeah. wanted was just Masvidal that. Masvidal on a full camp, too, yeah. this time. Yeah. Yeah, full camp, oh. whatever. I don't think he's that necessary. The full camp? I just, he's, he shits me these days. Uh, the whole you, talking, I, I don't know what it is with people that become like. Masvidal, this, you talking about? Yeah, particular... when you become a star. Yeah. I can't stand you anymore. He, he, he I, was, you, you just the whole, uh, I'm the fucking, sh everyone's yeah, going to yeah. get it. I'm like, oh, God, do you have to do it all the time? Can't yeah. you save it for like. Yeah, he became, when he was mysterious and he did the three piece in a sort yeah, of thing, yeah, yeah. He, he was at his all time high. Uh, and then, yeah, I agree. Once he became kind of more of a celebrity, he kind of started saying certain things that people didn't agree with. And he just kind well, of. I don't care about that. Everybody can have that. Well, no, no, I'm not even talking about. I'm not even talking I just about think you got politics. your little catch line things all right. the time where. You're you're just like a. He was in the media so often that it, it was yourself. You know, yeah. you're just yeah. selling this gimmick to me all the time. I'm like, I, I get you got a manager and you're so hot right now, but that's what I'm trying to say. When you get famous from being an a real athlete, and now your famous manager agent gets you yeah. and tells you that you have to have a new tequila and a new fucking thing and a fucking super necessary make like and subscribe. Yeah. I like I liked you because you if somebody looked at you sideways you fucking snapped yeah. them. That's and you're really an what I was fighter. referring to. Yeah. All this stuff we've seen so much celebrity out of him lately. I think that people it's need to start attractive. having a backbone for their own careers. Like I if think you got a manager, Uzman. he doesn't give a shit about any yeah. of that famous shit. That's what's yeah. scary about him. But it's it's, it's well, he's, easy. he's just scary for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying like that. It's just like but guys also, like that. I'd be more scared of that guy. It's also easy when you're like, a champ because yeah. it's like what the champ says yeah. goes. There's nothing... I do want to say, I think Usman, you don't know because Usman's not as marketable. Yeah. I think that yeah. I think that there's this thing where you can yeah. be the number one fighter in mm -hmm. your weight class, mm -hmm. but then there's this Conor McGregor yeah, yeah. effect. Yeah, like, right, and the right. Masvidal definitely got a Conor McGregor effect right. where people that didn't know MMA or even see the fucking fight right. were like, oh, it's the guy in the UFC, super necessary. Yeah. Need Ben Askren in the head. That's all you need. That's yeah. all you need. And, and now he's management, which is, I get it. I've mm -hmm. been kind of famous before. They tell you to do a bunch of shit. Oh, sign this. I've got a book. I've got a fucking thing. Blah, 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 blah. Right. Consume, consume. It's such I'm a water, the fucking water problem now. Down. Yeah. I get it. You got to, and the difference is Masvidal cannot be Masvidal in the UFC for the rest of his life. Yeah. It's a very small window. So you need to cash out. But 
It's such a sellout game these days. Everybody who's the best now has this gimmicky thing that they have to sell me after it. I'm like, I just wanted to see the fight, man. I don't really yeah. care about drinking your whiskey. I mean, I hope you sell whiskey, but I just want to see you fight. Yeah. And it seems like it's way more about what watch you've got on. And when the fight happens, it's not that good. You're not that good anymore. You're way more into the whiskey and your watch. Us uh, uh, Mazadov, rather. Mazadov full camp. Going against Usman, I think he's going to be able to throw a little more combos and explode a lot longer. Yep. But but the, but the word on him is like he just starts to fade. He gets tired. That's just he doesn't. That, Especially he's not a with a guy like Usman. cardio guy and yeah, a guy oh like Usman who's going to wear on you, God. put you against the fence the entire he time. He can take he could, he could take your best shot. Yeah, maybe not five of them, but he could probably take a good like a yeah. you you land a couple of clean ones. He's not going out for those. No, and he's got crazy striking himself now. Yeah, yeah. he's his striking his last fight was the jab oh. from both sides. God. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And then up against Power the cage. Jab. Masvidal hates that. Yeah. I think I think Usman is just fully like just yeah. has a lot more not a lot of skills. holes. Not a lot of holes. Yeah. But and he's a fucking he, And he's a monster of a, per, a, a he's beast just of an individual. In, he's in shape. Yeah. Right. All the One of the biggest strongest time. welterweights we have in a division with the skill set. God. Tough to beat. Yeah, I I I don't <laughs> it hey, it's like fuck dude like well, how do you how do you beat that yeah guy? it's kind of like Shevchenko yeah. uh, uh, Shevchenko's on the same card I believe uh, Valentina yeah. Shevchenko she's a 125 pound champion in UFC and she's just probably uh, one of the best strikers in MMA and she's in a division that's our weakest division in yeah, UFC the 125 pound women so whoever she goes against she just devours them it's just She'll like what, how do you how do you train for Usman, I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's you like, gotta, it's you like gotta, you got to train, dude, because you got to train. But it's like you go in and you train, you fight him, hoping just to like land that shot. You got to catch like, him. You got to catch him. Yeah. You know, and I just, ugh. Because he's been in the five round battles and he shows. And that, he that, doesn't even tired. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and he's knocking people like Kobe Covington out in the fifth round. Breaking their jaws. And so, <laughs> so he's he, got some he can go the distance. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's got that improved And Kobe's jab. tough as, I mean, kid's tough, hits hard as fuck too. Yeah. And, I really hope I'm wrong. Like I was wrong with the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight and, oh, and George Masvidal switches uh, Usman off because I'd be like, yeah, new stuff, something fun, something. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, yeah. and then we get to talk about how necessary you are, and and, and, and you get a t another title fight. Maybe you fight Conor McGregor because Dana White's like, yeah, all yeah, the money. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I would like to see the Nate Diaz Jake Paul fight though for sure. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. I mean, I don't, why, why not? not? Why, why not, Nate? Like, you hate Dana. Go, I, I go think, do it to piss I Dana off. Jake would be <laughs> too scared to yeah. fight. I don't, you know, whatever. I, he did, I don't think he'd want to fight Tyron. I think he would take uh, Nate oh, he first because Tyron. he's like, oh, I'm, can't, I'm too much. Would I'm, fucking tear him, right. Tear so him he thinks up. he's bigger Bang. and stronger than yeah. Nate. And uh, he could possibly take that. Fight. Tyron's got that. He's got he's got a hammer on him, dude. Right. He's, he'll fucking knock And he's you. more, Tyron's more of a boxer. He's I was more gonna of a say, boxer. He can really, box, yeah. he really right. can box. Right. Yeah, he's got some hands on him. You pick an MMA guy that has great hands. Now you've got a different game entirely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the range, man. Because it's MMA. You could be so good at all the other things. You really don't have to have boxer. great hands. Yeah. He has good hands. Yeah. He's going to die. I don't, <laughs> so I sooner mean, or later, as long as I stay alive longer, long I'm enough, Jay Paul's going to fight a guy and he's going to lose. Yeah. So all in the end will be well. That's <laughs> all you got to know. That's what's gonna happen, man. What? He, well, he's gonna he's gonna fucking knock out Tyron Woodley, and then he's like, "Fuck it, I'm in MMA. Yeah. I'm fucking oh, going fuck. for Masvidal." <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that's not going to happen. But so here, here's the thing: you think if Jake Paul loses, that he'll he'll come back or he'll be done? I don't mm. want to. I, I I don't like the person. He sounds annoying and stuff. But I think as if somebody puts in that <clears throat> amount of training and is willing to fight, I would have thought that Ben Ashkin had a big chance of me being demoralized, gassed, and hitting me in the eighth round where I don't see it. And he was willing to face that. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think he's the greatest fighter. I think he's a baby mentality. Mm -hmm. But I think he's not I think that he is a we're all afraid, but he will face his fears. Yeah. And if you're better than him and he and he loses, see that's the cre the credibility that he's gonna get. He's going to fight somebody that's better than him sooner or later and he's gonna show you heart. Before he gets put down, mm -hmm. he's going to show you that he's not scared. And and people like Alan go, oh, man, you know what I mean? Like, you, at least you put on a show. You you, you didn't go yeah. down. You didn't <clears throat> cop out. And I believe that that's in that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's as far as it goes. I just don't know where, how far, I, how much further can it go? Yeah, I feel like that's like uh, with Ryan Garcia, you know? Yeah. When he his last fight, he got like, he fucking got knocked out, basically, and got back up and won the fight. And that's when I think everybody's like, oh, he's a legitimate boxer. Because all of his other fights, he's just 
tearing every fucking body apart. So tough yeah. to deal. And with. he finally got rocked and got. I mean, he got fucking shook. You know, yeah. onto the ground. I mean, and got up and fought still. And that's what I was like. Oh, I got a lot of respect for Ryan Speed Garcia. Speed kills, now. man. That is a he's, fast dude, Ryan fast Garcia. Fast dude. Jeez. But I, like I said, I was just happy to see them. Like he's a fighter. And then he got yeah. up after getting like knocked. The yeah, fuck people out. respect that. People and, respect you know, adversity. They haven't seen it see yet. It. No, nobody's seen it yet. And that's yeah. what I'm curious with Jake. Like Jake hasn't really been. It hasn't really been... Yeah. Stick around. Yeah. It's It'll coming. Come. It'll come. It's it has coming. to. All right. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks, our yeah, first man. guest thanks ever. For coming, thanks for being on the show. It's thanks coming. for punching yeah. us and shit, you giant bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we find you? Uh, my Instagram's that one leg monster. Um, that's pretty much... I don't do like the whole tweeting stuff. It's just Catch Instagram. You. I like that. that one leg monster. It was a nickname given to me for... Well, I guess... Having one leg and being a monster ass. I was going to say, I wonder know. where that it came suits from. suits you yeah. somewhat well. Yeah. yeah. So I was kind of stuck. I'll be in the airport to be like, I don't even know my name sometimes. It's like, yeah. oh, one leg monster. One I'm like, what's monster. up, dude? I'm like, what's up, man? And it's just the thing. It's not, it's, 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 you're not going to find me on Pornhub. None of that. So no. it's just Instagram, that one leg monster. If you're looking for me, guys, that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's his name yeah. on Pornhub. The other side of the table, though. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care, guys.